This is a revision video for the GCSE biology topic of homeostasis. It's an introduction to the general topic which is then supplemented by videos that look into the different conditions that are controlled within homeostasis. If you're taking AQA GCSE biology then this is a paper 2 topic and it comes up in unit 5 which is the homeostasis and response module, although some textbooks and revision guides call it coordination and control. By the end of this video you should be able to define homeostasis, give examples of three conditions that are controlled as part of homeostasis, list the parts of a control system and briefly compare the endocrine and nervous responses. As cells or organisms move through their environment they are subjected to various changes. This could be internal changes within the cell because of the chemical reactions that are going on or external changes like the weather becoming warmer. In order to maintain good health, it's important that the cell can moderate those changes so that the conditions inside the cell remain more or less constant. This is because our metabolism, or those chemical reactions happening within a cell, is controlled by enzymes. Enzymes have a highly specific shape, and if they're exposed to conditions that are too variable, like a temperature that gets too high or a pH that gets too low, then they may be denatured. This means that they are permanently deformed and their active site will no longer be able to interact with their substrate. So it's crucial that a cell or organism can overcome any changes to keep the conditions that enzymes are exposed to constant. If we look at our AQA GCSE definition, it says that homeostasis is the regulation of the internal conditions of a cell or organism. So that means the conditions inside the cell. This is in order to maintain optimum conditions for function. So optimum means the best or most effective conditions, the conditions where the enzymes are going to be able to work at their absolute maximum rate, in response to internal and external changes. So that could be something like a change in temperature. This is done using something called a negative feedback loop. Now negative feedback loops are automatic systems that respond to changes in conditions without you having to think about it or do anything. Your body is just constantly making adjustments. So this would work something like you feeling too cold, and that might not be a conscious thought, it's just something that your brain can pick up on. And so because you're feeling too cold, your body starts to do certain things to warm itself up until you reach the point where you're now warm enough. And then at that point, your body again notices that the conditions have become optimum and it stops doing the things it was doing to warm you up. There are three named examples for GCSE biology that you need to be aware of as conditions that are controlled by homeostasis, and these are blood glucose concentration, body temperature and water levels. Now if you're taking combined science you need to know that all three are controlled by homeostasis but you only need the full detail for blood glucose concentration, whereas if you're taking GCSE biology or what we might call triple science then you do need to know the detail for how all three of these conditions are controlled. Your body contains several different kinds of homeostatic control systems and these can either be based on your nervous system or on hormones or a combination of the two and we'll talk about that in a minute but first you need to understand that all of these different control systems have three key components receptors coordination centers and effectors receptors are cells that can detect a stimulus which means a change in the environment so for instance, the cells in your retina at the back of your eye are able to detect light. There are cells in your tongue and your nose which are able to detect chemicals. The receptors in your ear are sensitive to sound waves. And your skin has receptors that are sensitive to pressure, to pain and to changes in temperature. All of these are examples of receptors. The second part of a control system is a coordination centre. And the role of the coordination centre is to interpret the change in the environment, the stimulus, and then signal the effectors to do something. So the main coordination centres in the body are the brain and the spinal cord, but also some other organs such as the pancreas. Finally, the control system needs to have an effector, because these are the cells that actually respond to the change and help the conditions in the cell to go back to what they were before. So effectors can be split into muscles which contract to move a body part and glands which release hormones or other chemicals. One key challenge that the body has to overcome in homeostatic control is that the receptor cells, the coordination centre and the effector organs may all be in different parts of the body and yet they have to share information even though they're quite far apart from each other. This is done using two key systems, the endocrine system and the nervous system. The endocrine system passes information using hormones, 
chemical messengers that are secreted by glands and transported in the blood. The nervous system sends information in the form of electrical impulses, which travel along the nerves. Generally speaking, the endocrine system is much slower, but it does provoke a longer lasting response. When a gland secretes a hormone, it takes several seconds for this to be pumped around the body in the blood to the effector organ, but then the hormone can remain in the blood for minutes or even hours. The nervous system acts much faster. Sending a nervous impulse takes a fraction of a second, but once it's happened, then the signal is over. Generally, hormonal responses are good for coordinating long-term change. If you're dehydrated, then the body needs to continue acting on this information for several hours. In contrast, the nervous pathway is really effective for responding to an emergency stimulus that needs an immediate response, like you burning yourself or pricking a finger. Thank you very much for watching this video introduction to homeostasis. There are separate videos as part of this series that go into reflex actions, thermoregulation, osmoregulation and blood glucose control, so don't forget to like and subscribe down below so that you don't miss out.